Welcome to this WiseOwl tutorial on debugging in SQL Server integration services. Here's what you'll learn in the tutorial. We'll begin by looking at how to solve runtime errors. So I'll show you how to set up an example package and we'll look at how to solve a genuine runtime error using the output window. We'll then look at how to debug data flow tasks using data viewers. And finally, we'll look at how to debug control flow tasks by setting breakpoints and then by using the watch and the locals and other windows to monitor the value of variables. So let's get started. Before we start looking at debugging in SSIS, let's take a moment just to see which example we're going to be using. I've got here a workbook of XFact contestants from the UK version of the show. Anybody who's been watching the other videos in this series will probably be familiar with this by now. And if I scroll down, you can see there's actually 109 rows in the spreadsheet. Now what I'm going to do is import this into integration services and display how many rows there are. So if I run my package, which I've already created, you can see it displays a message saying the number of rows imported is 109. Here's how this works. I've got two control flow tasks. The first is responsible for importing the Excel contestants into a variable. So if I double click on that, you can see it consists of a source based on an Excel workbook, and then a row count transform, which stores the information, the number of rows imported, in a variable called number rows. My second control flow task is a script, which passes in the number of rows variables into the script, and then uses C sharp in this case, to display a message saying how many rows have been found and there's the value of the variable which is being concatenated with other bits of text to form the message. So that's what my package is doing and as I said when I run it everything seems to be going alarmingly well for now. In the previous part of this tutorial I showed you the example we were going to be using but I wasn't quite honest with you. I made out that the first time I ran it it worked perfectly but that sadly wasn't the case. This is what actually happened the first time I ran it. Although it appeared to be working perfectly, I couldn't see the message box at the end. And when I went to the data flow, I could see that it had stumbled on the Excel source. So what was going wrong? If you've got a problem like this, and you can't work out where your package is going wrong, a good place to look is the output window. Now, I've got mine visible down there, but in the unlikely event you can't see it, you can get to it by choosing view from the menu and choosing output. But I don't need to do that because as I say mine is visible. And if I bring that up you can see that the problem has happened shortly after the validation phase. The requested OLADB provider is not registered. If the 64-bit driver is not installed run the package in 32-bit mode. So what I did is I googled some combination of those words and I quickly found that I was by no means the only person with the same problem. If you're running an application running integration services on a 64-bit machine, you'll probably run into this problem too. The problem is that when you deploy the application, it will run perfectly in the operating system. But when you're designing the application, it runs in 32-bit mode, and there's no 64-bit jet driver for Excel or Access. So the solution is to right-click on your package, choose the properties, and change it so that in debugging, it's using, it's rather not using 64-bit runtime. So if I choose that and then just stop debugging, and then start again, you'll see this time it works absolutely perfectly. Now my point behind showing you that isn't to show off about the fact I know about 32 and 64-bit applications. I'm not an expert to be honest. More to show you that you can use the output window to keep track of what's going on in your application. There's two ways you can find problems in SSIS packages. One is by debugging the control flow to check the order in which commands are executing. And that's what we'll do in the next part of this tutorial. What we'll do in this part is have a look at the data flow to check if data is flowing down the system as we expect it to be. And the way to do that is to right click on any pipe of data and choose to enable something called a data viewer, which we looked at briefly in an earlier tutorial. You can see a little symbol pops up there, 
and I can right click on that and choose to edit it to see what's actually going on. If I click on the metadata tab it gives me a description or a list of all of the columns which are coming out of Excel and one useful feature is that I can copy that to the clipboard and perhaps paste it into Excel or some other application for further analysis. What I can also do is see which columns are going to be listed in my data viewer. Now I'm going to click on this button to transfer them all over to the left hand side and instead just decide to display the name of the contestant and the series in which they're competing and then choose OK. What will happen now when I run the application is that it will pause at the data viewer and that will come up in a separate window. And again I could copy this data if I wanted to to a separate spreadsheet again presumably so that I can analyze it further to check it's doing what I think it should be doing. But I'm not going to do that I'm just going to carry on running the application and you can see it's now resumed where it left off and it's actually displaying the message and if I press Alt Tab with a bit of luck I can find that message it tends to be a bit tricky to get to and then choose OK to clear it. When I finish with my data viewer I can just right click on it and choose to disable it. You need to be careful not to delete it because what that will actually do is delete the entire pipe of data. So if I disable the data viewer it vanishes from view and will no longer be executed when I run the package. In the previous part of this tutorial we had a look at data flow tasks and data viewers. But what's the equivalent way of controlling what's happening within a control flow task? As it turns out the answer is to right click on the control flow task and choose to edit breakpoints. And when you do that integration services gives you a list of all of the events which can happen in this task's life. The two main ones are I can begin, the on pre-execute event happens just before that happens and it can end at which point the on post execute event will happen. So I'm going to set a breakpoint for both of those two so that I can see when the task begins and when it ends. For any breakpoint you can also set a hit count type. This is only really relevant when you've got some sort of loop occurring. So for example you might want to, you might be looping over files on your hard disk and you might want to set a counter that after the tenth file is um, loaded in then a breakpoint will uh, occur and you'll go into debug mode. But we'll keep that as always for both the two breakpoints. If you then choose OK I can now run my package but just before I do that can I show you what the debug men menu looks like at the moment. If I choose debug from the menu and choose windows you'll see there's only three options on that menu. That's going to change quite radically in a second. So if I now run my application by choosing to start debugging it will execute until it hits the first breakpoint. And you can see it's at a breakpoint because there's a little yellow arrow on the breakpoint symbol. Another way to tell what's happened is to go to the output window and you can see that it's broken when the container receives the on pre-execute event. It's not exactly friendly but it's pretty obvious what's going on. Going back to my point about the debug window now you can see I've got loads and loads of windows there available to me because I'm now in debugging mode and I've hit a breakpoint but I'm going to ignore all of them for the moment and just continue executing and what you can now see is on the output window I've reached the post execute event and if I carry on executing this it will run and finish the task and finish in fact the entire package because there's no more breakpoints. So I can now find my message and choose OK to clear it and then stop debugging. So that's how you can set breakpoints for a task, just right click and choose edit breakpoints. But at the moment, to be honest, they're not a great deal of use. So what we'll now have a look is how you can look at the value of variables to see what's actually going on within a control flow task. We've just created two breakpoints for this control flow task, one to be hit when it begins and one to be hit when it ends. What I now want to see is how the value of the variable number rows changes during these breakpoints. So to do that I'm going to start debugging my package and then what I'm going to do firstly is look at the locals window. Whoops. So the locals window allows me to display the value of all variables in my package. So I can click on the plus next to variables to expand that section but unfortunately I see not only my user ones but also the system ones and it's quite difficult to locate the value of my variable called number rows. 
but now that I've found it, you can see its current value is zero. So I'm not a big fan of the locals window because I find it a bit confusing because everything's muddled up together. So what I'm going to do instead is to set a watch. And you can do that by choosing debug from the menu, choosing windows, and choosing to create one of four watch windows. And because I haven't got any at the moment, I'll put everything in watch window number one. Now I want to look at the value of the variable called number rows. So what I can do is display the variables window by clicking on the symbol and then drag my number rows variable onto my watch window and release the mouse button. You can see the mouse pointer has a plus on to show I'm copying something. So now I'm watching the value of that variable and I could add others if I had any in my package. When I run my application now, you can see the value of that variable has just changed from 0 to 109. So the watch window provides a way to monitor variables to see when their value changes. In addition to the watch window, I'll just delete that watch, there's also something called quick watch. And you can get to that either by pressing Shift F9 or by choosing quick watch. What that allows you to do is to click on the drop arrow or type in an expression and quickly evaluate the value of that. And you can also add it to your watch window, in which case it's just another way to watch the value of the variable. Now there's lots of other things available to you when debugging SSIS packages, but to be honest, the ones I've just shown you are the ones which I find most useful. And some of these I think will only be used by the very most advanced system programmers. So I'll just stop debugging. And that completes this look at how to debug packages in SSIS. You can find lots more training resources on Microsoft applications online at www.wiseowl.co.uk.